I call this slide uh, testing vectors in span subspace. So how do we test that the particular vector belongs to a span subspace? And that's again where this matrix identification is useful. I will, I, will show, I will make my demonstration on the question 34. So in question 34, you're given four vectors, and that will be quite a bit of writing, so I'll, I'll do it slowly. We have vector A with components 10, 11, and 4. We have vector V1 with components 2, 1, and 4. We have vector V2, components negative 1, negative 2, and 1. And we have vector V3, the final one, components 3, 3, and negative 1. Question says, question says, test that, test whether your vector A is in span of V1, V2, and V3. That's the question. If I use this lemma from the previous slide, if remember I called it uh, span in FN lemma, by this span in the fan lemma, I can equivalently restate my question like, like, like this. Vector A being in the span, vector A being in the span is equivalent. It is in the span if and only if. What happens? If I can produce an X vector from R3 such that my A is the result of the multiplication of this X vector by the fixed matrix capital A, where the capital A matrix composed out of these three S columns. Here it is. First column is a V1 vector, second column V2 vector, third one is a V3 vector. This if and only if it comes from this span in the fan lemma, which is discussed with you on the previous slide. So rather than testing this, I will test this existence. But the existence like so, the existence like so, the uh, finding a vector x such that this happens, given you know this vector a, effectively, if I wrote, actually I wrote it a bit in the wrong way. If I, if I write it like this, if I write it like this, VC, sorry, if I write A, if I write it like this instead, if I swap over left and right hand side, then it will be even closer to what you discussed quite extensively in the first semester. This is a typical system of linear equations with three equations and three unknowns, right? Here's my unknowns, here's the right hand side, here's the coefficients of my system of linear equations, and we know how to solve this in a very general in, in a very general way. This is a row, actually, it's a Gaussian elimination approach. So if I would like to answer the question whether I have such X, whether I have such X, I have to answer the question whether this system has a solution. How do we answer such a question? Well, we know how to answer that. We extract augmented matrix. Here's the augmented matrix of my system. Left-hand side will be my A matrix. Here it is. Right-hand side is my a vector is my augmented, uh, augmented matrix of the system. Left hand side V1, V2, and V3. Right hand side is the A vector. Now I have to take this matrix to the redu row echelon form. I'm not going to do it on the slide. Uh, like I said this morning in one of my tutorials, I'm sure half of this class uh, has done row echelon reduction 10 times more in, in this year, 10 times more than I done. So I'm sure you're very proficient with that. Uh, what I will do, I will put here dots. I say two row echelon form, and here's the result of the row echelon form. Here it is. If you don't trust me, if you don't trust me, here's the set of the elementary row operations which I've done. I, I, I'm, I'm, not showing the, I'm not showing you the intermediate steps, but if you want to double check my computations, here it is. First, I swapped the first and the second row. Then I, did, then I have done this row reduction, this row reduction, and this row reduction. If you, if you don't trust my computations, you can use Maple, but 
you see with the with the row echelon forms, uh, it's not a unique operation. Uh, depending on what what set of operations you choose, you may end up with a different row echelon form in the end. So if you want to check my particular row echelon form, here's a set of operations I have performed. Anyway, anyway, judging by the row echelon form, what can we say? Judging by the row echelon form, we have three pivots on the left-hand side. If you remember the criterion for the solvability of a system of linear equations, having three pivots on the left-hand side in three-dimensional augmented metrics means that we have a solution. Thank you. We have a solution. We have a unique solution, but we do have a solution. Meaning that, you see, the beauty of the whole thing, the beauty of the whole thing, we needed to test that my vector in a span. Or, as we restated it, we needed to see whether my system has a solution. The row echelon form analysis, or Gaussian elimination analysis, it gives you the answer. We do have a solution. It doesn't actually... We, we didn't find a solution itself, didn't we? So we saved lots of time without avoiding finding the solution. But the analysis itself gives us very clear, confirmed answer that we do have a solution. And that's why the answer here is yes. Do I have somewhere yes? Well, I don't have yes. I, I will kill this question mark. Yes, it is true. And that finishes the question 34.